And I thought I'd share with you uh, some pictures of a uh, bronze of mine that uh, a gentleman over in the United Kingdom purchased. And uh, it's one of two bronzes he purchased. Uh, the other one hasn't got there yet uh, because it's coming from another foundry. But this one is called Elk Woman. And here's uh, photographs of it in his house in the UK. Just thought you'd like to see that. All right, time to get back on the dog. Time to play with some clay. All right, I'm gonna work on the uh, hind legs or the hind paws uh, today. Let's see how far I get. I still have my cough. And so if you hear me coughing while I'm working, I'm sorry. I apologize. <coughs> okay. I'm going to take that screw out because I think it's going to be in the way. Got to have the joint. That's why I'm sculpting it in. And I'm going to take a look at something here. I had an artist friend back in Utah, back in the... Oh, when was it? It's probably the 70s. It was back when I was married, I think, and I was just starting out my sculpting abilities, or sculpting career, in the late 70s. And I went to visit him down near Springville, Utah. He had a studio down there. I mean, he had a great studio. I would, I'd never had a great studio. But he had, he actually sold bronzes. <laughs> It was a good marketer. I'm not. But that's neither here nor there. Um, he was doing a, a couple of plow horses. You know, big, strong breed of horses. And he said, take a look. And he opened up the sliding door. It was the middle of winter. You know, it was really cold outside, and he pulled on a chain, and up came a actual skinned out horse, and he had it with a rod going through the back of the horse, uh, a metal rod to keep the horse, uh, you know, standing upright. 
but the horse was hanging on this chain. Uh, I, I don't know how exactly he uh, managed to do that, but anyway, he didn't seem to do him any good because uh, it was a skinned out horse and all the muscles were showing and tendons and all that stuff. But uh didn't seem to do him any good because he was a terrible artist. His anatomy was horrible. None of the proportions were correct on the horses and Yeah. Anyway. I hope he doesn't see this video. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want him to insult him, but he was really not that good. I gotta, I gotta decide whether to make this a uh, female dog or a male dog. I might just make it a male. Okay, he's got a knee, and I gotta show that right there. The way you look at anatomy of four-legged animals is their basic structure is the same as humans with some different differences as far as uh, the layout of the muscles and stuff like that. But basically everything's the same as uh, humans and uh, for instance, this is a would be equivalent to your knee, and this would be the upper bone of your leg and the lower bone of your leg. These phalanges down here and this right here would be e the equivalent of your heel, and this would be the equivalent of one toe bone, and that's uh, how you look at things. Uh, just it's. There's, there's a uh, single designer as far as life goes. And uh, what works for humans works for animals too. It just verifies that there is a creator as far as I'm concerned. As long as I'm working on this leg's muscles, I think I'm going to do the same thing on the other leg. Just because it's it's good to, if you're going to work on one thing, you should do the other thing as well. Just so that you're consistent. And because uh, it's it's good to do it while your your mind's fresh on what you just did. Well, I forgot to even turn on the camera. <laughs> I forgot to turn on my camera so you could hear what I was saying. Um, I don't know whether you saw me put on the tail or not, because I don't know when my camera quit on me. And I wish the damn things would make a noise when they shut off so I could know when they're shut off. But they don't. And so I'm sitting here sculpting deep into what I'm doing, and... Uh, I don't know whether I'm sh shooting video or not, and obviously I wasn't. This is as far as I'm going to get today. Uh, I got the uh, both hind legs sketched in and the hips sketched in. I'm happy the way it looks. I mean, this is when it really makes you feel good when things are looking like a dog and not like a kangaroo or something. But uh, there's a there's a thin piece of skin that goes from the inside of the leg all the way up to your the body of the dog. And 
So I put that in there. I'm just basically blocking in things right now. And uh, I'll come back later and fine tune it. And I'll start filling in a lot of the crevices in the clay. But you see why I, I do this away from the uh, mountain man, because there's just no way I could work on this side of the dog if he's up against the robe and this side of the body is in unaccessible, inaccessible. All right, that's going to be it for tonight, and I'll see you next time. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.